Saturday Social is powered by EA Sports FIFA 23 with PlayStation. Uh, you mentioned Champions League, Joe. Only right that we kick off the show by talking about it because some unbelievable games. I don't know if you managed to catch it whilst you're away, I but didn't there was some... watch loads of football, but I've seen the highlights. Oh, mate, some some brilliant games, and obviously it features some of the best players in the world. So it got us thinking about who have been the standout players in mm. the Champions League this season. We've given our guests a little bit of a task, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. As you can see, the Saturday Social whiteboard is out with a one to ten list mm. on it. Dave is going to be in charge of the magnets. And with his insight, his statistical knowledge, <laughs> yes. he's going to be picking the 10 best players, in his opinion, in the Champions League so far this season. Theo is going to be kind of critiquing his selections as we, as we go through. And we're going to go in reverse order, 10 to 1. Criteria is they've got to play in the Champions League this season. It's not right. that hard. Let's start with your 10th best player in this season's Champions League. I've tried to be fair with positions because I think that if you've excelled in one position and you've been that good, you've got to be in the top 10 list. So we're going to start with one centre-back, John Stones. Oof. Not made massive amount of appearances in the Champions League this season, but the performance against Bayern Munich this week, absolutely outstanding. Playing in midfield, defending at centre-half, mm. playing a little bit like a libero, different to when he plays right back in the Premier League, moves inside. I think he's magnificent and I think City are going to go far in the competition. He's going to be there. Very important player. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that pick, to be honest. He's only had three games in the Champions League, so to make it to the list is... You know, it's big pretty performance. Different. He impressed me. But big performances, you're right. One goal, one assist within yeah. those three games. Important against Bayern. And yeah, I think he's a Rolls-Royce Rolls for centre-half. So mm. I agree with that. Seeing his versatility as well, aren't we, in different positions as yeah. well. Which yeah, what do we think about that? Because obviously he's started to play in this sort of hybrid midfield role yeah. recently, especially in the league, isn't he? I think his last four performances have kind of been more involved in midfield than it has at centre-half. But you know his, his quality as a player has always been carrying out from the back. Yeah. His, his understanding of the game is really, really good. Yeah. And I think uh, you know, a player of his quality, it was kind of a natural progression maybe to play in that central area. You know, We talk about players changing positions and it's absolutely perfect. John Stones is, is just such a fun player to watch at the moment, especially kind of in the Champions League. I know we're talking Champions League specifically, but I didn't know if you knew this stat, Dave. I'm going to chuck a stat back oh, at you. He has the does. best passing accuracy in the Premier League of any player this season, 93.6%. Mm, great start. There we go. Yeah, good work. <laughs> OK, number nine. <laughs> just wanted to chuck one in. Number two. nine. <laughs> um, <laughs> what a show-off move that was. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was impressive. Have, yeah. We always have least. to do our research and show, data show because he move. knows yeah. so much yeah. about <laughs> stats and football. Uh, number nine. Number nine, Who we're going to go with? with our first Napoli player, um, Di Lorenzo. Di Lorenzo, yeah. Very, very good. Obviously, Euro winner with Italy. His performances this season have been absolutely sensational. Mm. Most progressive passes in the Champions League this season from mm. right back. He's so good. The goal he scored against Frankfurt, the link-up play with Kravitz Scalia was beautiful. Mm. He has just been the standout right back, in my opinion, in the competition this season. I feel his, his performances have been absolutely outstanding. Mm. Leo, your, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree with that. I've watched Napoli live as well, and he's really good at linking up with the wingers, as you mm. said, with Kvara. And I think, especially right now, when there aren't too many standout right-backs, he's incredible at adopting to the roles. And, you know, with the wingers, sometimes they have Kvara mm. on the left or the right, but he's able to adopt with whoever's in front of him. And I think he's got about four contributions, which is yeah. great to add to potentially what could be a great Napoli run in the Champions League. Plays all the time as well. I think he's been rested once in a cup game, but mm. he's, he just, he's always a regular for that Napoli side who are performing so well on so many Yeah, fronts. and I think that's one of the big things with them. It's all about space. And I think one of the reasons why they struggled with Milan is because Milan tactically dealt with space very, very well. Mm. You know, Napoli move around. You know, you'll see Di Lorenzo at number 10. You'll see him out wide. You'll see him inside, as Theo mentioned. And I think that level of, of quality from fullback, it's what we expect from a Joao Cancelo or a, yeah. you know, a Trent. And, and that's the level he's playing at at the moment for me. Were you surprised with that result? Because obviously I've watched, I mean, I was yeah. both of Spurs' games against AC Milan. And, you know, I look, I look at AC, AC Milan's season and where Napoli are in the league and how they've done against them. And I think surprised to see I know it's only a one goal and it's only one leg and they're still alive in the tie but surprising result that for me massively surprised and I think the Milan are Napoli's kryptonite and this was yeah. the worst thumped draw them. for thumped mm. them in, in Syria, Syria yeah. Yeah. Nail, yeah, so. did, yeah and it's kind of like dealing with that I think Osimhen coming back into the side changes these things I think they, they struggled with that false nine they tried to play Ilmas through the middle didn't quite work mm. Raspadori started on the bench even though he's what scored four goals yeah. and two assists in the Champions League so I think that I think the second leg is the one to watch next week. Yeah. That's got a lot rising on it. So that's what I'd, I'd recommend watching. And only watching. one deal, yeah. so still, still. And Napoli haven't been great in the cups. 
have they? Mm. Eva in the Coppa Italia yeah. crashing out pretty embarrassingly as well. So, all right, let's keep going, though, because you've got another Napoli player. Yeah, this is and getting this a bit boring, isn't it? This is a this theme, is a theme, theme throughout, yeah. I've had a sneak peek at this top ten. Not a Napoli And there's, there's not a lot of red and black shirts or a lot of blue well, and black shirts. We're going to see him invited to a Napoli game soon on his, on his socials. There's not a lot of Milan there. love in there, is there? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Napoli have scored the most goals in the Champions League, so you can't ignore them. No, They're you can't. They're going forward. But defensively, if you've watched Kim Min Jae this yeah. season, yeah. he is absolutely outstanding. Yeah. For me, he's playing similar to the level of you know of when Virgil Van Dijk was on the up. In a sense of he's so so dominant. Most aerial duels won, most interceptions as a defender. He's a very very good player. Super fast, great on the ball. He's had you know one of the most touches for a defender in the in the competition as well. I just I just think that we can't ignore him being in there. And again, you know. People might not have watched Napoli this season. One thing I'd recommend doing, as you've done many mm. times, logged in live, is yeah. go and watch Napoli. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. a special club. And the fact that they picked him up for £16 million yeah. pounds mm. off Fenerbahce at the start of the season, when they were actually selling off their world-class talent, everybody thought this is going to be a bit of a rejuvenation time for Napoli. They're going to need some time to adopt with their new players. But the likes of Kim and Jay have stepped up to the plate and they've already got Liverpool, United, yeah. Yeah. Chelsea. Everyone's after him. Yeah. And that is showing when his When Kula Bali left, it was like, wow, this is one of the best, most dominant defenders mm. in Serie A. Kim Min Jai is just is an upgrade. Yeah. He is. He's yeah. been an upgrade. Spurs have been linked with him for so long. As well. <laughs> <laughs> long no. time. So I was tracking him. And I, I, I've yeah. been watching this season. But Spurs had him when he was at Fenerbahce, right? He's, yeah, he's exactly. Before, yeah. before Napoli. And, and he's been almost faultless, hasn't he? Yeah, no. He's, he's such a key, key he's, part. He's brilliant. And it's a big part of how they, they play out from yeah. the back, play through midfield. You know, the defenders are very, very important. We're going to Next go away from Napoli. Not Napoli player, yeah, surprise, unfortunately, yeah. not the Napoli 11. Yeah. I'd love to have done that. Uh, but I think we've got to put Valverde in there. He's been absolutely sensational for Real mm. Madrid this season, but also in the Champions League. Most passes into the penalty area of any midfielder. It is just a real quality player. Last mm. season, we saw him cover positions right, mm. wide right. We're seeing him a little bit more in central midfield, but the work that he puts in and his ability to get up and down is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I think we have to, you know, put a bit more respect on some Real Madrid names in this list yeah. going forward. I'm hoping there's a few other Real Madrid can, names can in I there. Can I just because... th Theo quickly? Sorry, Joe. Just in terms of these names, should any be higher than where Dave's got them so far? It's hard to judge without seeing the next six. Yeah. There's definitely some big <laughs> names to come. From the teams that are remaining in the tournament, I'm sure I could come up with six names that are better performing <laughs> than these four. Yeah. But no, I, I think it's we'll, we'll judge by the end of it. Yeah, yeah we can always but, move it around at the end. We get a bit of fear to make it. I must mention Valverde, though. His understanding with Modric and Cruz throughout yeah. this Champions mm. League period has been great. I think he's added two goals and two assists, but he's more than that. As you said, he's yeah. an engine. Yeah. He can get up and down the field. So I completely agree with that pick. I think as well with Madrid have kind of changed their midfield. Camavinga from left back we've seen recently, him coming inside. It's a little bit different dynamic and I like it. So Modric is presumably in this top six as well? No, no. Lobotka this season has been absolutely outstanding for Napoli in the Champions League. I'm the sorry. way he controls games <laughs> is phenomenal. So he's not, you're not having sorry. this one, When we, we no. talk about Luka Modric, Luka Modric is sensational. The level this season of Lobotka, I think, has been better than Luka Modric in the Champions League. That's why the little Napoli um, central... So Modric is not in your top ten. Is Modric not in your top ten at all? Dave! Right? Cut out. So this season, we, you know, we're building to it. We're seeing a lot of Napoli players. It's getting, it's getting a bit Napoli now. It is you know, getting we've a bit got Napoli. Inter, AC Milan, Benfica. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. We've got five more. It's fine. We've got five, 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 five more. Would five Modric more be in your top ten? Modric, I, w I would have added him. Absolutely. After did his group stage performances. And yeah. Did we watch him against Liverpool? Yeah. yeah. It's just me who watched him against Liverpool. I, I think he's the best player on both legs. But the level that he's performing he at for his, for his age at the tail end of his mm. career and the position that he plays in terms of having to cover a lot of ground, I just think is incredible. Luca will do it in the semi final and the final, then he'll be in the top 10. Absolutely. Okay. Fine. Look, could, this is right <laughs> this now. Disrespect right? Is real. We've seen so far. The disrespect um, is real. But we've not spoken about Lobotka. What, what a player. You know, yeah. he's, a, he's, a, he's a very, very, very good player. He runs the show in the midfield and he does the work that people don't see. They, everyone credits Osimhen and Kavara, yeah. but the dirty work is done by Lobotka. He's that holding midfielder. Mm. He's, I think he's got more tackles than any other player for Napoli this season and that's what people don't talk about. Well, so Dave I actually respect <laughs> Statman Dave. Yeah. Okay. Is that right? Is that stat right? That's, that, that is, is completely correct. All right, we're going back to Real Madrid. <laughs> okay. I think a player that will be probably number one at the end. Ooh. But right now... Number five. We're going to put be Benzema number five. Because of his big game performances you're talking it's about. Comes yeah, to four goals so far yeah. in the Champions League. Uh, you know, nowhere near the levels of last season in so far. Yeah. But we know that, like, what, the hat-tricks that he scored against Chelsea, PSG, yeah. PSG, sorry, absolutely sensational. He'll be up there. He'll be top three by the end of it. But at the moment, I'd say right now, okay. there's four players that have impressed me more than Karim Benzema. So Benzema with four goals, but Salah, second top goal scorer, you're not mentioning him? So the rules that I've selected this okay. on, the top ten, if you're not in a competition, you can't be in a top ten. 
Fair enough. If you've not made the quarterfinals of the Champions League, how can you be regarded as a top ten Champions so no League? Salah no, 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 Mbappe, no, Mbappe. no Salah. No, we, Mbappe, they, seven they've goals. Not, they've not done Salah, it. Salah, eight goals. Salah's the second top scorer in the competition, still despite the fact that they've not got, in got it, no games goals. on Tuesdays or Wednesdays anymore. That is true. Ooh. Yeah. But uh, Benzema has four goals and he's been injured. But Benzema's in here because we know where he's going to go. Okay. Oh, no you'd have a lot higher, I'm guessing. I yeah. just am furious Modric is not in there and I'm seeing some of these names coming. <laughs> from. Okay, let's go, <laughs> let's go on to the next one. Let's yeah. go okay, to so you're going to be furious about this as well. The go man on, that destroyed Liverpool. In one, one leg. In one Oxford, leg. He's not at Anfield. Hold on, we've got four Napoli players now. Yeah, yeah. we have. We Where are the Benfica, uh, AC and Inter players? I, I, feel, I feel a bit bad for Benfica, to be fair. Rafa Silva probably should have been in the list. I, I think Mario. Yeah, him. can I mention Jean Mario? Yeah. Eight contributions yeah, so look, far this season. And it stands by your rules. He's still in the competition. He's a good point. The, I, I, I think I've let myself down a little bit. I think Rafa Silva should be in this list. Jean Mario, maybe. But I think Rafa Silva's the one that runs What's the show. What's your problem with Milan? <sighs> because you've not got any Inter or AC yeah. Milan players on the list. I don't know where it comes from. It, we could see, and most likely, given the first leg results, are going to see a, a, an all Milan semi final. Yeah, can we mention Inter? Because they're leading 2 0 currently, and they're going to most likely go through to the semi finals. Onana has been man of the match the last four games. They've kept clean sheets back to back in the Champions League, two through the knockouts. He's been outstanding. And to hold Porto in the second leg in their own ground to a 0 0 to go through by one goal. Come on. My, my number come 11 on. was a goalkeeper, and it, I got cut. <laughs> By production, so it's not really on me. <laughs> wow. um, let's oh. uh, let's swiftly move on to uh, Napoli teammate. Na Crab no, Napoli not player. Player. Number three. Another Napoli. Sorry, Another sorry. Napoli let's go to Theo because you, you, your face Five. was a picture there. Again, they've I don't scored the this. most goals. What, what's got your one issue of the with the, the, or... the amount of Napoli players? I completely agree with Cavara, but... Yeah. How can you have some of the players down here considering we've got to respect the Milan so, clubs more? Best right back in the competition, best centre back in the competition, one of the best DMs, best one hold of on, the best centre forwards. Hold on, best full back in the competition. Let's, let's go one by yeah, one. Go, go on. The best full back competition is Grimaldo. He's created the most chances and helped Benfica get to a stage ben where they should know right be here. I'm sorry, Di Lorenzo should have gone off this list. You've got enough Napoli. I can't believe you're taking Di Lorenzo off. I can't he's believe he's the captain. I can't oh, believe Lebok is in there over Modric. You see, these things happen. Some people make, <laughs> make lists and I make some lists sometimes that people might not agree with. OK. Um, we've got two names left. <laughs> Theo looks fuming, doesn't he? Look, he's really not happy. Oh, OK, not happy. here's the top two. <laughs> Theo, who do you think the top two are in the Champions League this season, in your personal opinion? <laughs> You've got to have... I'll say one name. Vinny Jr. has got to be number one, right? OK, who's the other player? Uh, Haaland. It is correct. They are in agreement. Yeah, they, 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 we have to agree on these. Yeah, two. no, I, I can't think, roast you. I can't roast you. I think that. I think that's spot but, on. Yeah, you know, just, I, I, I agree that them two have to be the number two. But my problem is around the third to tenth place, where the, the dominance of Napoli. That's my only issue. They're going to win the Champions League. The third to tenth you place. Think they're going to win the, rest of the, list? <laughs> the, the whole list. Entire yeah. list. The whole list is an issue. They're going to win the Champions League, so we'll be all right. We'll review this in a few months' time, and we'll, we'll look at Napoli in we, a great we position. We definitely will. Yeah, we will. If, if Napoli go out, then, oh, no. then half yeah, of the list is becoming ready. I think I might go on an early holiday <laughs> yeah. for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, go on. So, so what order do you put them? Let's go with your second best player in the Champions League this season. Who's at number two for you? It's a tough one, but I think Haaland, you know, top goal scorer, eleven goals this this season in the. Champions League, you know, he's broke yeah. the, the 30 record fastest over Van Nistelrooy, the youngest as well. Yeah. But I think he's had less of an impact on games than Vinicius Jr. So I think Vinicius Jr. has been more pivotal than Haaland has this season. So I put Haaland as, as two and then I put Vinicius Jr. as number one. Mm. I think the way Vinicius Jr. solo has destroyed the likes of Rhys James, Hakimi over the years, mm. and even recently, just every fullback he comes, Trent, yeah. every fullback he comes up against, Hot he player. just makes them look yeah. awful. I, I, per, on personal performances, I agree with you, but haaland has got what eleven goals in the Champions League? Eleven yeah. goals in the Champions League, top scorer in the Champions League. He's also got game. forty-five goals in all comps this season, Ooh. which is a record for any Premier League player in one season. And and we're still, it's still. Midway through, we're well, not midway yeah, I think, through. There's I still think quite a few games. We left. might need to swap that one round. You'd have the other the other way I, around, I, would you? Holland eleven goals. He's yeah, got but at the, at the same time, is five came in one game, and you watch that back. It wasn't. But it doesn't, it doesn't before, count. No, but but Vinicius Junior, as you mentioned, is impacting yeah. multiple games. Top assists. He's still directly involved in eleven goals. He's carried Real Madrid in an offensive position, whereas Haaland is supported by Grealish, Kevin De Bruyne, and Riyad Mahrez. Mm. Yes, he's the goal scorer. Yes, he's putting the ball in the back of that, and he's number two. But he's not Vinicius Junior level this season. And, and when you look at what Vinicius, where he's come from, his development, the goal in the final last season, it's just gone, like, through the roof. Whereas Haaland, you could argue that his 
playing exactly how he played last season in a much better side. OK, my problem isn't first and second, but on another note, where is Giroud? Six contributions at 36 years old in nine games. Oh, come on, Olivier, Olivier, Olivier Giroud can't to... be in there. But, Os but Osman, Benzema, Haaland are three, are three strikers well, that are far ahead. But how at 36 ahead. can you get four goals, two assists and help Milan get to potentially the final four of the Champions League, underdogs, and yet you just disrespect him and put does what, he play, six Napoli players Does he on play there? for Napoli? Oh, this is the problem. We're going. It's not going to be in the league. It's Napoli or nothing. It's Napoli or nothing. Fakaya Tamori's been good as well. Tamori's and, and, and Tamori has been really good for Milan. Um, yeah. Vinicius Junior. The mad thing about Vinicius Junior is he's already made 215 appearances for Real Madrid, despite being only 22 years of age. When you think of the calibre of players yeah. that Real Madrid have, uh, absolutely incredible. So that is confirmation. You're happy with that, Dave? You're not. Dave's happy. Nobody, nobody else is happy. happy. Not happy. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Joe, on that? I just, it's so Napoli heavy. I think I think it, it's incredibly harsh on the Milan sides, and there's got to be a Benfica player on there, given Benfica's level this season. Mm. Yeah, I mean they're unbeaten for about the first seven and months Inter of the season. And AC Milan. Where's Bastoni? Three assists, left centre back. Literally, five of these players are going to lift a trophy come June. <laughs> it's going to be incredible. There we go.